gonna be kind of a casual video because today I'm gonna take you along for a day of homesteading. We have some fun things happening at the homestead today. We're gonna to get some chicks and I'm gonna take you along with me as I go throughout the day. So we have a lot to do today. Woke up and decided to make a solid breakfast. I'm testing out a new recipe for the blog. It is a egg muffin recipe. The reason I wanted to do these was because I want to try to make breakfast a little easier. I feel like every morning I wake up and by the time I get breakfast made, eaten, and cleaned up, it's almost lunchtime. Any way I can make that easier and give myself more time, I'm interested in. So I'm gonna try these muffins out because what I can do is make a lot of these muffins and then put them in the fridge and then take them out as leftovers and eat them later throughout the week, even for lunch too. So I'm gonna start by cracking 12 eggs into a bowl, adding some salt and pepper, and I'm going to make some broccoli in the Instant Pot. I'm just gonna steam it and some bacon on the cast iron. I'm gonna chop up the broccoli and the bacon. I also got some fresh chives from our local farm stand. And I'm going to just add all of these into the egg muffins, pour the egg mixture on top, and bake them. pretty well. They are a little bit exploding out of the muffin tin, but that's okay. They still taste great. I had a couple of them and then we're going to store them away and be able to eat them kind of throughout the day. And this hopefully will just make it so that one day if I have a lot to do or I just want to, maybe I want to work out in the morning, which is usually the time I like to do that. It's just so much easier to have breakfast made because if I have to work out in the morning, then I have to shower too. And then it's workout, shower, breakfast, take care of Allison. And, and then it's lunchtime. Sometimes I even eat breakfast at lunchtime. So I'm trying to get better at that whole morning routine to make it so that I have more free time actually in the morning. Anyway, so now that breakfast is done, I am outside in the yard and I am just gonna do a couple of things around the garden. Now last week I showed you a tour of the garden back here. It's pretty small, there's not a whole lot going on, but we do have a garden bed. And I showed you how we moved this big trough that we had back here. And that was actually my favorite place to plant flowers and vegetables. But we need the trough because it's gonna house our chicks. And that's what we're gonna be doing today is picking those chicks up. But I'm going to think about actually putting a garden bed right here next to the house where the trough was because I loved having that raised bed right there, right next to the door so I could just come out and pick flowers or vegetables. Even though it was small, I only had a couple of things in there. But that's all you really need. And that's the thing about homesteading is you don't need land or a whole bunch of space or 10 garden beds to grow something. You can grow a lot in just one garden bed. Now, I also tend to overplant a lot, but you can still get stuff. I mean, you can just put seeds in the dirt and get some fertilizer or some compost and you will get something. So I'm trying to figure out what to put in the flower bed. I want it to be big and colorful. Would love to have plants that come back year after year. If you have any ideas of things that have worked well for you for or flower beds, let me know. Every year I always surprise myself. I always think I'm gonna do really well at one thing and then that thing doesn't work out, but something else does that I didn't think I was gonna do well at. So homesteading is just a continuous journey of learning and trying new things and not being afraid to do things that are against the rule book, but also knowing that uh, failures or just things that don't work out quite yet are just that. They're not failures. They're just things that you haven't figured out yet, whether it's sourdough bread or chickens or growing tomatoes. It's all the same mentality. On another note, I lost one of my kale plants, so I'm gonna be doing this eggshell method where I put eggshells all over the ground garden bed. And I also talked to somebody at our local hardware store and they said putting alcohol like beer in a little container next to the garden, all the slugs will go to it and then they'll die unfortunately. So I'm not thrilled about that method, but you know what, but honestly, we have such bad slugs here that it prevents us from growing a garden. And so you gotta do what you gotta do. But I did get some cilantro and parsley and another kale plant for this garden bed. I really like to grow food that I actually eat. I know that sounds like super obvious. Things like cilantro, parsley, herbs, sage, rosemary, thyme. I used 
sage, rosemary, thyme in all my chicken recipes. I use cilantro and parsley in tomato recipes or tacos, anything Mexican spicy food. So I just really like to have that stuff on hand if I can. Okay, here is our brooder set up here. This is just an old Tupperware container that I'm gonna clean out and get this set up. We're gonna put them in the trough in a few days, but when they're so small, we just are gonna keep them in here for now. Make sure they're warm enough. You sure this is safe around plastic? Um, no, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not. It could melt. Because it's going to get super hot, right? Or is it, how, how hot does it get to the sale? 95? No, it won't melt. Yeah, I mean. I, 95 is like a hot outside. day. Yeah. yeah. It won't melt the plastic. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's like a hot day. Okay, I am headed out to go get the chicks now, so I will you a little show and introduction when I get back. The big one that's kind of brown and orange. Careful, she will jump out of there. Do not move that. Hold on. Oh. It's hard to move around in this garage at the moment. Get more rocks because... Alright, all right, I'm gonna open it. I'll do that. Okay, so she's... She is the uh, cinnamon queen. All right, pick them up. Okay. There we go. Can I get one? Mm -hmm. At the feed store, they were going like this. She had to be really careful. She specked you. She did? Yeah. You notice? There you go. I really like that, huh? Can I do it? Okay, so she just went under. See that? Mm -hmm. Around here. So this is the cinnamon queen right here. She's the one that's like a Rhode Island red. Because her mom and dad are Rhode Island. So she's gonna be a really good egg layer. Those two on the left are the buffs. And the one that went under is the um, Easter egg. This is some um, grit and raw oats that I'm going to add as well as some herbs. I just pulled these from the backyard and this container of dirt and a little clump of grass just to get them to get used to the outside and where they're going to be living in a few weeks. All right, meet the new Duval Homestead baby chicks. We've got an Easter egger at the top. This is a cinnamon queen basically a Rhode Island red and white blend. And then these are buff Orbindas. And so these are the new little members of our little farm. We are trying out this heating pad and it keeps them super warm and that's why they're all under it right now. So it's instead of using a heat lamp, it's like it, it imitates basically a mother hen. So small, it's very tightly fits in my hand. Okay, well thank you so much for joining me for this day in the life of homesteading and meeting our chicks. I hope you enjoyed coming along with me for the day. If you're brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. Every week I post a new farm to table recipe and homemade natural living on the blog. So don't forget to check back the blog, theduvalhomestead.com. Every week there's something new up there that doesn't always make it on the YouTube channel. Thank you so much for stopping by the Duval Homestead.